Craig, what mm. an honor and privilege to have you at our studio today. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. My pleasure. You and Darlene have been more than just friends to Iran Alive Ministries. You guys have been partners and mm. an advocate for Iran Alive Ministries and the work that the Lord is doing through the ministry among Iranians and Farsi speaking people of the world. Mm. I would love for our audience to get to know you a little bit better um, and would love to know how you connected with Iran Alive Ministries. Well, that is an interesting question because actually it goes back more than 10 years ago because on my own, whereas I, I've been a full-time missionary for, mm -hmm. you know, 37 years and all over the world, uh, kind of part-time on my own, I've been studying Islam, mm -hmm. Islamic history, Islamic jurisprudence, the Quran itself, and lots of that background, and specifically... Iran, right. I don't know why, actually, of all the countries of the world, study about Iran, Iran's history, Iran's church history, mm -hmm. Iran's missionary history, as it relates to the Church of the East. So all of that was going on. So fast forward up until about 2020, as we all know, COVID uh, happened and the pandemic happened around the world. And um, about March, the world stopped. And a few, a few months went by. We thought it was going to open. It really didn't open. There was lockdowns that happened. During that whole time, I did a lot of reading and just a stack of books, mostly audio books, so not a, a virtual stack of audio books. And one of those books that, that somehow I came in contact with, I don't know where from, was this book, Iran's uh, Great Awakening. And uh, so... I, I saw the cover of it, and actually I got the audio book for it right. as well. And I, it was just a, a kind of a mesmerizing cover on it, uh, of the, the face of it. And I said, that might be interesting. Iran's Great Awakening. I'm always interested in missiology, moves of the Spirit of God around the world among people groups. So I read this book, and as it describes, it's a, it reads just like sitting down with Pastor Hormo Shariat and him telling the story of his life. Mm -hmm. it, it is like that as you read it. So I listened to it, listened to it. As the story went through, I learned a lot about Iran. I had heard about Iran Alive Ministries before as one of the missions out there. And I read it and it went through the background of uh, Hormoz's life and how he uh, was in Iran, that whole story, you have to read for yourself. And uh, it, was, it was exciting all the way to the time where he came to Christ. He met Donnell. He was in the United States. I'm fast forwarding. Uh, being in Northern California and starting six churches there uh, for about 20 years and then starting, I guess, what became Iran Alive Ministries and then moving from there to here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And uh, the, the full uh, part of the book where he explains biblical prophecy related to Persia right. and ancient Persia and then future Persia as well as as well as current uh, Iran as well and I just read that and I was fascinated by that I had to slow down in the audio a little bit because it was kind of thick and, and, and detailed as it should be and I, I was fascinated by that and then as he went through that portion of the book he then finishes by explaining this is the tremendous you know, revival that's going on among Persian people in Iran, one of the greatest revivals in history. Uh, I have a degree in missions, been a missionary for 37 years. I heard about that and that the Iranian church is growing at 19.6% annually, the fastest growing church in the world right now, and maybe the fastest growing church ever in 2,000 years of church history, which is not, you know, saying quite a bit. Right. So I read that, and as it explains all of that, and it explains in the book all the different ways they're ministering to reaching the Persian people, which was fascinating. Then it explains at the end of the book ways you can get involved. And if you're interested in getting involved, let us know. Yes. Contact us at the end of the book. And so you have to understand, I was already a busy missionary, our, our focus is with our organization as we train national church leaders in restricted access countries. Right. So we're everywhere. We're right. in Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and restricted countries. And my focus, focus if you want to say, 
was recently 1.3 billion people of China, wow. Myanmar, uh, the Philippines, and I had done ministry in, in India and Nepal and Pakistan and a bunch of different places around the world. While all that was going on, COVID was going on, right. th read this book, and it was as if the Holy Spirit just said, well, they said, how do you want to get involved? If you're interested, get in, uh, contact them. I said, well, I don't know how to do that. It did give a way to do that. The background of that, so that was about July of 2020. June 20, maybe July of 2020. And so my brother, Mark Kordick, is the head of the Alliance for uh, Unreached People Groups mm -hmm. for the Unreached. And so he, and he's been in donor relations in Christian circles for 25, 30 years. He knows everybody. Right. So I, I, I got on the phone right away. And I, I said, Mark, you know, uh, I've read this book. All of what I explained just happened. I told to him, I said, can you set up a meeting with Pastor Hormoz and myself in the next few weeks? And we were just barely being able to start to travel again, if you remember those oh, days. Absolutely. It was really challenging. Yes. And he says, well, under, under one circumstance. I said, well, what is that? He says, under one circumstance that I can be involved with that meeting at the same time. You have to understand, my brother had, had and has many, many different COVID-19 comorbidities, mm -hmm. all kinds of different things. So it was a stretch sure. for him to go out to have a meeting. So he said, okay, well, I'll set it up. And he did, and he set a time. And he says, now, I'll just come in and say hello because he, he had a relationship with Pastor Hormoz. And he says, I'll just stay for a few minutes and then I'll go out because I don't want to expose myself to germs or whatever yeah, right. in covid and or you know either way and so it turned out when we came here actually on this site here in the northeastern part of dallas fort worth area that hormoz is the only one here <laughs> and so it was just the three of us so we ended wow. up talking and have a conversation for two hours it was a thursday afternoon and i know i know how busy someone like him right. has to be so to give someone five minutes is a lot. 15 minutes is almost forget about it. And so two hours is ridiculous. That's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're right. Um, the alignment that there is with your background of 40 years being a missionary and working so closely with an organization, with a mission organization that trains church leaders um, with Iran Alive Ministries that our you know, pillar of um, everything we do here at the ministry is sharing the gospel with the mm. Farsi speaking people of the world and discipling them as well as developing leaders, Amen. church leaders, so that they can carry on the work of the ministry. Mm. And I do, I, it's fascinating to me that the Lord would bring an advocate with such extensive background like yours to Iran Alive Ministries so we can partner up together to, to carry on the, the work of the ministry together. You have been um, an advocate for us and you have been talking to so many different organizations about the work of uh, Iran Alive Ministries among Muslims and Farsi speaking people of the world. Um, and recently you and Darlene um, have done a project here at Iran Alive Ministries for us. As a matter of fact, you're in Dallas for that project. Yes. So tell us more about that. Well, yes. Yeah. So going back to that, that meeting I had with Pastor Hormoz, as I shared, I, I explained to him the whole situation with the book, yada, yada, yada. And I said, so all I know is I should be here. God wants me to be here. I don't know why. Right. And what his reaction to that told me everything I needed to know because he, he, his feathers weren't ruffled, he didn't seem surprised, and he seemed like, okay, another person that God is leading yes. in our direction to partner together yes. in ministry. Yes. So he wasn't, and that told me a lot about him and openness when you're leading any ministry. So yeah. as we got to know one another, we would share and talk, and after that meeting, the, the relationship just kind of grew and developed. We got to know their family, they got to know our family, of course, he already knew Mark. Mark was at that meeting. And in the process of that, I mentioned, oh, by the way, I'm married. I have three kids. We have three kids. Darlene, my wife, and I 
been married 38 years and have three kids. And uh, my wife is a very unique individual. She is only about five foot one, five foot two on a good day. And, but she packs a lot of power, a powerful punch. That's awesome. Because she's a, she's a dynamo spiritually, involved with ladies' ministries and, you know, starting and being involved with ladies' ministries and speaking at women's retreats and conferences and Bible studies and getting her master's in counseling, having a biblical counseling practice in our home as well. And uh, of the three kids we have, getting back to your question, we have three kids, Amber, Seth, and Paul. Amber, who's 32 right now, Seth is 29, and Paul is just 25. So Amber is the reason for the, your question, actually, because Amber, as we, we were in Hong Kong, we started, helped to start six churches there, and uh, we had our first child, Amber, in Hong Kong, and Either it turns out, either she was born with autism or she developed autism. We're not sure exactly what, but she seemed to be a rather normal child learning English and Chinese there in Hong Kong. And then all of a sudden she developed autism, OCD, schizophrenia, and it was developmentally disabled. Mm -hmm. And so it was so difficult dealing with her. We didn't know what it was, how to deal with it, didn't have any advocates. None of our friends or field counsel with our mission understood what we were dealing with, and we were just a young couple. We had no idea. So the, the, the difficulties and the trauma and challenges we went with with her through those years, and now she's 32, mm -hmm. but she started when she was about two years old really working with her. What, what, what we learned, uh, both of us together, Darlene and me, but Darlene in particular, really... It was out of all of that that her Bible study that she wrote 10 years ago, God's Perspective When Life Hurts, was written. Right. It describes essentially the theology of suffering because she suffered, oh, the, the difficulties and challenges we had. Right. With, any, with any special needs child, statistically, those parents who have a special needs child, almost 90% of them divorce wow. because of it. And um, there's just difficulties and problems like that. Right. So, but the Lord brought us through all that. She created this Bible study. She, um, it was a video-led Bible study, and she taught it in many different churches, in our church in, uh, in Colorado Springs as well, Rocky Mountain Calvary. And uh, God just used that. So I told Hormoz about this. I said, oh, by the way, she has this Bible study. What's it about? I explained it. And because the Iranian church is, is very persecuted, of course, he was very interested. Sure. He was interested because Iranian people in general, Christians, are, are persecuted for their faith. Yes. She was a woman who wrote this. And women are probably, by and large, probably more women are persecuted than men, I would say. Yes. Very harshly treated, yes. as I've learned and as I've heard testimonies and whatnot. And uh, particularly, this whole idea of suffering is something that's so necessary. Yeah. Women need help and, and, and training and encouragement and, uh, you know, healing. And this Bible study did that. So uh, Pastor Hormoz mentioned, well, this is something we could do. We could come here. Darlene could, could like, re redo uh, the teaching of this Bible study in 13, 30-minute segments, videotape it. The ministry here could dub it or, mm -hmm. or voice over it into Farsi and then broadcast it by satellite TV on Network 7 into Iran. And we're like, this is so thrilling. And this was just a side thing yeah. that the Lord brought into my life because I came into this, ran into this book in June of 2020. Isn't that amazing? So as missionaries, um, you are sent to different places, different countries, and you are called to minister to a certain group of people. Through this Bible study tool, you and Darlene have been partnering up with us. It is as if you guys have gone to the country of Iran and you are ministering to Farsi speaking people 
through this opportunity that we have um, at the studio to be able to record the Bible study tools and the resources and the teachings and be able to dub and translate it and broadcast it to Iranian people and Farsi speaking people of the world. To me, this is a fascinating opportunity we have. Iran is a closed country. Hmm. No missionaries can step into Iran, but here we have the opportunity Mm -hmm. to really be the hands and feet of Jesus, just like you and Darlene have been this past week and for, um, for the course of the mm -hmm. time that you have been partnering with us, mm -hmm. to be able to really get your own messages, mm -hmm. your own teachings that God has entrusted you with mm -hmm. that message to minister to your Farsi-speaking people that you may never see until Absolutely. you're in heaven. Yes. This is the fascinating opportunity that we're so thrilled about that Jesus um, has really enabled us to be able to minister to p people of Iran and Afghanistan mm. and Tajikistan and people that are in the Middle East and they're mm. unreached. And no, no one can really reach them except through the window of the opportunity mm -hmm. we have through satellite. So thank you for doing and being obedient to the call of the Lord as missionaries to not just going to places, to different countries, mm -hmm. but also partnering up here in McKinney, Texas with us so that mm -hmm. people in Iran can hear your messages. Mm -hmm. Amen. Really exciting. And really it all, all goes back to our organization of training national church leaders in restricted countries it goes back to 1979. Mm -hmm. We've, we partnered with 12 different agencies back then, not me personally, but others that were there in the uh, Eastern Europe bloc countries back when there was the Iron Curtain. 12 different organizations partnered together, created our organization that would focus on packaging discipleship church leader training that's systematic. Uh, it has the methodology mm -hmm. of using a small group uh, Socratic method of interaction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to small groups of church leaders that are active in ministry and we would teach them usually it would be in English through interpreter into their local language be it Russian or Ukrainian or Romanian or there's all these different countries and then we would teach them these Bible courses like Bible study methods New Testament survey um, and more and we would teach them the course and we would teach them and train them how to treat, tra uh, train others. Mm -hmm. So if we had a group, typically 15 to 25 church leaders in a, in a room like this, we would train them in, um, you know, Galatians is another one of our courses. Romans is another. In Galatians, we would teach them Galatians and facilitate it in the different small groups. It'd be in small groups within the classroom we would give them uh, questions, they would have done the homework, and then we would facilitate it with them. We would teach them how to do the facilitation mm -hmm. method of teaching, and then we would, at the same time, be training them how to do this same training to their own groups. Yes. So that everyone in the classroom had to have to graduate, every one of them had to have their own groups of 10, 15, 20, church leaders that they're teaching in their own national, usually their own country or region, mm -hmm. or they couldn't continue. Right. So by the third course we teach them, we have 12, 12 different church, you know, discipleship church leader training courses. They would have to have their own group to be training uh, the same, same material in the same way to their own people or they couldn't continue. Right. So we told them if they just had a hangnail or something and said they couldn't show up, we don't want you. Yes. <laughs> we've got a lot to do. And right. so we've done that for years, most recently China and these other countries. And then I heard about Iran. And so when I talked to Hormoz, the very thing that was most necessary right now yes. is discipleship, yes. probably women's ministry, maybe children's ministry too, but discipleship and church leader training. And so yes. that was our forte. I said, Pastor Hormoz, this is what we've done. Yes. We're not perfect, yeah. but this is our forte. This is our focus. How can we work together? And so we've already translated three of our courses into, uh, into Farsi. It's all ready and done. And so we are making plans now to start actually training Persian uh, church leaders that are active in ministry, and they will train others. 
So the whole point is like lighting a fire of training a group and letting them go yes. to multiply. Absolutely. Not just addition, but multiplication. Amen. And with the, these kinds of numbers of Iranians that are coming to Christ in these last days, we must have a multiplication you know, methodology or else we're never going to do it, never going to reach the need. Amen. Absolutely. We, um, our focus actually from the beginning of this year has been more on discipleship programs. Mm -hmm. um, we realized that over the last few years, the number of salvations are increasing, but then the discipleship is missing. And so we put a lot of focus on creating a lot of content, which mm -hmm. part of it is the um, lessons that have already been translated into Farsi, and we are going to translate more of it and make them available for um, people that are part of 412 training schools and, yes. and being able to really get the um, church leaders involved in teaching them. So the fast addition that you mentioned about mm. would turn into multiplication. Mm -hmm. And so um, I encourage um, everyone who's watching this program also, if they do have any material, any resources, any teachings, anything that would allow us to carry on the great commission that the Lord has put before us to go and make disciples of all nations, reach out to us bring your resources, bring your tools, bring your teaching videos so we can work together to translate them, to dub them and make them available for Farsi speaking people. I do want to give a big shout out to you because you were proactive in finding out what the needs are and you jumped right in. You mentioned about women ministry. We are um, ever producing um, um, content that are focused on women. Mm, the, the program that Darlene, your wife, um, put together and taught here are specifically for, um, you know, bringing God's perspective mm. when life hurts. Mm -hmm. what, what do you do when life hurts? Do you just mm. give up? Do you lose hope? And Iranians, mm. as you mentioned, um, we have more Iranian women mm. that are leaders of the churches, underground churches and mm. house churches. Um, and those women, when they receive the message of salvation, when they receive a hope that the only Christ can give mm -hmm. them, they become what we call agents of transformation. Mm -hmm. They bring their entire family to <clears throat> faith. They become very active in the community. They share their faith with everyone that they come, um, come in contact with. Mm -hmm. And so we need to equip women mm -hmm. generally in Iran because they're the ones that most need it. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying men don't, mm -hmm. but women generally speaking in Iran are more oppressed by the restrictions that the government mm -hmm. has put on them. Mm -hmm. the, um, you know, a lot of the gender inequality that they have to, to um, really tolerate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them do actually have children um, that may be suffering from, you know, autism or OCD or ADHD. And they needed mm -hmm. this very timely message that your wife taught them mm -hmm. um, so that they can hear it and they can really bring God's perspective into their mm -hmm. life and, and dealing with the issues. Mm -hmm. So we all are entrusted with a message from the Lord. And so if we, we all are the body of Christ mm -hmm. and each, each of us are the member of his body. So if mm -hmm. we all can bring in our own forte, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and really partner up together for the advancement of the kingdom, we can definitely do much mm -hmm. for, the, for the kingdom and for Christ and carry on the Great Commission. Amen. Because we have, uh, with our organization since 1979, we did a lot of, lot of training, as I said, in... Uh, places like uh, Russia, Romania, Ukraine, and a, a lot of those other countries in that, in that area. And so now, through the years, they became independent, like our organization's name, Russia, Ukraine, Romania. And I've actually facilitated with some, like Romanian, mm -hmm. in Vietnam as well. So we trained over the course of a, uh, maybe about 20 years, we trained hundreds of thousands of church leaders in Europe. And word spread over to Asia. And when word spread over to Asia, 
they heard by word of mouth, this organization that they, who we are, what we are, how we disciple, how we do church leader training, and that we come when we, when we say we will come and we follow through right to the end. You can depend on us and they multiply. And so when we started in China, in Asia, they had already heard about us. We'd say, oh, we're this, we're that. Oh, they would stop us. They'd say, we know. Right, that's awesome. We thoroughly awesome. checked you out before hmm. you ever came here. And so we would, have, we would have big organization church networks, underground church networks of millions of people. And it's very hierarchical mm -hmm. in China. And so the top leaders would come, be involved with our training of their leaders, of 20 of their very hand-picked precious leaders that they, they put a lot of stock in, a lot of trust in. We would train them. The leaders would be in our, our classrooms. And at first they sat back and because they're big leaders, right? right? And then they got involved. And then they realized it's knowing, being, and doing as we, mm. we concentrate on not just head knowledge, but your Christian life and then doing your Christian activity and ministry as well. And so we did all of that. And so we have, we have seen those kinds of that, that, what, that phenomenon take place. Mm -hmm. And so we pray that would also be true among the, the Persian people because they're spread out all over the world. Yes. I just went to uh, Iran Alive Ministries Leadership Training Summit in the Netherlands, which is a whole yes. other story that you already know about. Yes. I didn't think I was going to go. I went. It was like being in Iran, seeing the new believers, seeing church leaders, seeing the leadership growing and multiplying and the thirst they have for discipleship and church leader training. Amen. It was so thrilling to be among them. And just, we, we love being involved. My wife and I, in different ways, being involved, helping Iran Alive Ministries. We don't speak Farsi, right. but even a person who doesn't speak Farsi um, can be involved in lots of different yes. ways. We've been able to pass out many Iran's uh, great awakening books to churches and, and shared in churches uh, about uh, your ministry, what you do. They never heard. They knew nothing about right. the great revival that's going on, nothing about the tremendous need, nothing about the tremendous prayer need Absolutely. for Christians to get involved. I'm involved with the IAM's prayer meeting every yes. week in English. Yes. So we can do that. I can't do anything in Farsi. You have what, tens of thousands that pray in Farsi, and that anyone can get involved with that. Every Tuesday, what is it, at... Um, 2 p.m. Central 2 Standard Time. Central Time. Yes. Anyone, it's, it's by Zoom, anyone can join and be yes. involved. There's room. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you've been more than just friend, uh, a friend of the ministry. You've been involved in the prayer group mm -hmm. on Tuesdays. You have been raising awareness for Iran Alive Ministries and the work of the ministry um, by going to different churches and talking to them about us. And like you mentioned, so many people don't know what we're doing through mm -hmm. the satellite TV and what the Lord is doing through every single one of us. Mm -hmm. So I give you a shout out, a huge mm. thank you. And um, I, want, I want us to have more advocates like you. Mm. I want Iran Alive Ministries to have many, many advocates uh, that exemplify your character, that would just spread the word about the work that the Lord is doing mm -hmm. in Iran and the revival that's happening in Iran. Amen. So thank you. Thank you for all that you Our have pleasure. been doing with us and, and mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us for this program as Glad well. Glad to be here today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. God bless you. God bless you.